Hi there, and welcome back to Conversations with Father Greg. Thank you for joining us as we begin our Holy Week journey towards Easter. The reading of our first Gospel reading for today is included in this episode, and links to it and the second portion of that reading are found in the notes for this episode. Let's turn our attention to a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Matthew writes, When Jesus and the disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of Christ May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there, everyone. I'm always amazed by the wealth of readings every year on Palm Sunday. We begin with a shorter gospel reading describing what is often referred to as Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He rides into the capital city on a colt or a donkey amid shouts of praise from the crowd declaring him to be a prophet. When we read this story, we need to remember that Jerusalem was not simply the national seat of civil authority. Jerusalem was also home to the temple, the spiritual epicenter of the Jewish faith. When the crowds welcomed Jesus as a son of David, one of Israel's greatest kings, as well as a prophet, they were attributing authority to him on multiple levels. As the story of Holy Week unfolds, we begin to see inconsistencies between what the crowd expected from Jesus and Jesus' expectations of himself. Our second gospel reading takes us beyond Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. Jesus was no longer riding through the city on the back of a colt. We see him standing silently before Pilate, being asked to defend himself against charges of sedition and blasphemy. The crowds that had so recently praised Jesus as their Messiah were now calling for his execution. The story unfolds, revealing the trial, execution, and burial of Jesus. To anyone in the crowd, in the palace, or even among Jesus' own disciples, it would appear that the one who entered Jerusalem so triumphantly was now in the depths of defeat. The victor appeared to have become the victim. This is the part of the Easter story that is so tempting to overlook. For some, there is a very real desire to go from singing Hosanna on Palm Sunday straight to proclaiming Hallelujah, He is Risen on Easter morning. This second Gospel reading and the events recounted during Holy Week force us to face the uncomfortable part of the Easter story. If we give in to the temptation to overlook the difficult parts of the Easter story, then we risk missing two important messages. During the time between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, the first important thing that we learn is that we see Jesus entering into the kind of suffering that is common to the human experience. This is an important reminder that God does not stay far off observing humanity from a distance. In the person of Jesus Christ, we see God fully entering into the human condition. We often use the term incarnation when we celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas. It's a term that allows us to talk about God taking on human form 
flesh and blood, to join in the story of humanity. During Holy Week, we see that concept of incarnation coming full circle when we talk about Christ's physical suffering and death. It's during Holy Week that we begin to more fully understand that in the person of Jesus Christ, God did not simply join us for the good times, but came alongside humanity for the full range of the human experience. There is a second important lesson for us to discover in today's reading. We can learn a lot about a person when we examine how they respond in their darkest hour. Just as this applies to people in our current world, it also applies to how Jesus responded during that first Holy Week. During Holy Week, we see Jesus at prayer, talking to God and praying for his disciples. We see him instituting a model of servant leadership by washing his followers' feet and teaching them to love others as he loved them. We see Jesus instituting the Eucharist that we recall every Sunday when we gather together in church. All throughout Holy Week, we see Jesus responding to persecution by planting the seeds that would grow into the church. In doing so, he provided a model that faithful people have been following ever since, both in good times and especially through difficult times. It's a model that teaches us to seek a closer relationship with God, while also encouraging us to love others as Christ has loved us. On one hand, there is a very real temptation to try to escape the tragedy of Holy Week and simply move from the joyous shouts of Palm Sunday to the celebration of Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. Honestly, I think this would be my personal preference. But the more I think about it, the more I begin to wonder, how can we speak of resurrection with any kind of integrity without first speaking of death? To quote 20th century author J.R.R. Tolkien, There can be no triumph without loss, no victory without suffering, no freedom without sacrifice. You see, the challenge of Palm Sunday, and by extension the challenge of Holy Week as a whole, is that whenever we diminish Christ's suffering as he approached and endured crucifixion, we similarly diminish the victory of his resurrection. The irony of Easter is that we cannot grab hold of the celebration without getting cross-shaped splinters in our hands. Today we sit on the very cusp of Holy Week. It's time to renew our commitment to the spiritual disciplines that we began on Ash Wednesday. As we prepare to celebrate Easter, let's not lose sight of Jesus' journey from the cross, through the grave, to the joy of the resurrection. Let's pray. Jesus, when you rode into Jerusalem, the people waved palms with shouts of acclamation. Grant that when the shouting dies, we may still walk beside you even to a cross. For the glory of your holy name. Amen.